In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgression unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful, and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil, and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us, and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Glory be to God on high. The Lord be with you. Amen. 
Let us pray. O Lord, keep your church with your perpetual mercy, and because of our frailty we cannot but fall. Keep us ever by your help from all things hurtful, and lead us to all things profitable for our salvation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The first lesson for the 14th Sunday after Trinity is written in the book of Proverbs, chapter 4. Listen, my son, accept what I say, and the years of your life will be many. I guide you in the way of wisdom and lead you along straight paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hampered. When you run, you will not stumble. Hold on to instruction. Do not let it go. Guard it well for it is your life. Do not set foot on the path of the wicked or walk in the way of evil men. Avoid it, do not travel on it, turn from it and go on your way. For they cannot sleep till they do evil. They are robbed of slumber till they make someone fall. They eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. The path of the righteous is like the first gleam of dawn shining ever brighter till the full light of day. But the way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. My son, pay attention to what I say. Listen closely to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. For they are life to those who find them, and health to a man's whole body. Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is written in St. Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 5. So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. 
For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other, so that you do not do what you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under law. The acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Again, those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to you, O God, in Zion, and to you shall vows be performed. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
Grace and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Imagine life as a leper in Israel. The word of God is clear on the matter. Those with leprosy are ceremonially unclean. They cannot live inside the city. They must live outside. By themselves, away from everyone else, so that they do not infect others, and so that their rotting flesh does not disrupt the pure and holy worship of God. So just imagine the day when the first white spot on your skin appears and you try to cover it up, but someone sees it and they haul you off to the priest in the temple who declares you unclean, out you go. Out of your home, away from your family, to be alone and cut off. Perhaps in another year we might think such a scenario impossible. But make no mistake, There is a reason that the Lord did this in the Old Testament. A reason that he singled out leprosy. God chose leprosy and he dealt with it in this way, as a living sign of human sin. Because what leprosy does on the outside, sin does on the inside. Rotting flesh is nothing compared to the rotten stink of a soul being eaten up by lust. The physical separation of the leper from his family is nothing compared to the spiritual and emotional separation caused by careless and cruel words. The lingering death caused by this disease is nothing compared to the eternally lingering death of hell if the soul cut off from God by unholiness. So make no mistake, you and every man, woman, and child who has ever lived are a leper, a leper on the inside, spotted and rotted with the terminal illness of sin. What joy then is ours this morning to turn our eyes and our ears to Jesus and to see his response to these ten lepers. They cry out to him from afar, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. For This is the beginning of salvation, repenting. Turning to Jesus to seek his mercy, but for these lepers it will only be the beginning. Notice what they call him. They call him Master, not Lord. They're looking for mercy, yet they are not yet looking for the one who is merciful. This becomes apparent from what happens next then. Jesus tells them to go off and show themselves to the priest, to to show them to be declared clean on the way they are cleansed. But nine of them never return. As far as we know, they never saw Jesus again. Why not? We hear sometimes that they're called unthankful. But could that really be? I mean, could anyone really be unthankful after being freed from such a hideous disease as leprosy? I doubt it. Surely when they got to the temple, they must have have prayed a a prayer of thanks when they met the priests and showed that they were clean. The reason they failed to return was was perhaps not that they were unthankful, but because they had gotten what they asked for. They got what they sought from Jesus. Remember, they called Jesus Master, not Lord. They came to Jesus as the master of all nature, as the the powerful prophet who could heal them. They came looking for a miraculous handout, and that was it. They weren't looking for any strings to be attached. They got what they wanted and they moved on. Jesus says that the the nine other lepers did not return and give praise to God. Even though they had gone to the temple, the house of God, as he had said, what Jesus means is that the place for praising God is not so much the temple, not anymore. 
That is because the God who is to be praised is to be found in the new temple of Jesus' own flesh. Jesus is God incarnate in the flesh. That was the point of the miracle, and yet the nine missed it. They did not return to give praise to him, the true God in the flesh, because they did not believe in him. The nine lepers are not unthankful, they are unbelieving. There is no coming to the Father except through this Jesus, and that's what the nine lepers miss. Let me ask you, what do you want from Jesus? If you cry out to him because because you are suffering under the weight of this or that effect of sin, disease, anxiety, stress, heartache, you name it. You cry out, God, get me out of this, and that's good. That's right, you should do that. But if you think that as long as things are going a little better, as long as you're making some progress, even if every problem were to miraculously go away, well, why, of course you'd be thankful. But if you then conclude that there's very little reason for you to spend any more time with Jesus since he gave you what you wanted, then I'm afraid you will have missed him entirely. You do not praise God. You do not believe God if you do not find him in the person of Jesus Christ. Apart from this Jesus, you have no God. Apart from the Jesus who came to you in the flesh, you have no God. Only one leper, the Samaritan, understands what this healing really means. It means that he has encountered God face to face. And he returns, falling on his face, to give praise to his Lord. Only this leper understands that to receive physical healing without spiritual well-being is worthless. Think about it this way. Every blind eye that Jesus ever healed in his earthly ministry is today still blind, shut tight in the grave. Every lame limb that Jesus made to run and to leap again lies today six feet under, idle, paralyzed. The healings that Jesus performed in his ministry were were nothing but parlor tricks unless, unless they pointed to something deeper. And what they pointed to was this. Jesus is the Lord of death and life who bore the sins of the world in his body on the tree, died for them and rose again from the dead. And this is what Jesus is doing on the cross, bearing the world's weight, bearing the leprosy of sin for the whole world. Think about that. Who was ever cast out like Jesus? Tossed out the city gates. He's crucified and bears the full weight of God's wrath against sin, even though he himself is God in the flesh. There, in the death of of the God-man, death dies. Sin is shut down, never to rise again. But Jesus rises. And so your life rises with him. This is the healing. This is the saving that Jesus came to bring. That's the healing, the saving that one former leper also received. Now those words, those thoughts, that truth of what Jesus has done for us is probably so familiar to us that we are in constant danger of letting it become just words, just thoughts, just truths on a page. As if we were to say, well, Pastor, I know all that. I, I know that Jesus died for my sins. He took away my sins. I know that I'm going to heaven. What I'm really worried about is this leprosy. What I'm really concerned about is this disease, you see. 
what's stressing me out is, I don't know, you fill out the blank. And whether our problem goes away or not, unless we find ourselves at Jesus' feet, in the flesh, we are only walking further away from him. Beloved in the Lord, look at this one healed leper as a living sign of your salvation to again reawaken in yourself the wonder and the joy of just what Jesus has done for you. Imagine the release and the relief of being free from leprosy, of being reunited to your family, of being welcomed home. You see, what this man received in a mere earthly way, you possess, even right now in eternal realms. Because you too have been healed. You've been washed of your sin, leprosy, and holy baptism. You are in God's sight forgiven and fresh and clean and new. You too are welcomed home by the Father in holy absolution as he speaks his word to you, calling you his beloved and his forgiven child. And you too are gathered to your family once again as you join with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, with all those who rest with the Lord. As you come to receive and to praise and honor Jesus, who gives to you all that he has to give, who gives to you himself in his body and blood. This is truly the, the medicine that heals every spiritual leprosy. Indeed, it is the antidote to death itself. And certainly the antidote to every possible potential cause of death as well. That's the living body and blood of Jesus himself. Receive this and be made whole. To me, the saddest part of this whole story is, is the fact that those nine healed lepers, they never know what they missed. The only one who knew what it was to hear from Jesus' lips, rise and go, your faith has saved you. Those who only take from Jesus what they want, what they feel they need, usually get only that much. But those who come back receive not just the opportunity to praise Jesus, but they get to hear beautiful, comforting words from him. They receive from him more than they ever even knew that they needed. Your Jesus has those same gifts for you. Same words, same comfort. In remembrance of your baptism, in the continual hearing of his words, the reception of his supper, as often as you drink it, so that at his word, you can rise and go. Go back to your family. Go back to your friends. Go back to your home. Go back, rise, go into your calling, healed and forgiven with a joy that only Jesus can give. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We join in confessing the Christian faith using the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God.
Beloved in the Lord, on this day we seek God's blessing as we, with thankful hearts, set apart this piano for his service and to his glory. God is the creator of all arts and has given us especially the gift of music, and so to him we sound our praise. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you dwell in the heavens, surrounded by angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, as they offer their worship and sing, Holy, 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 Lord God of heavenly hosts. We thank you that you have united our voices with their unending hymn of praise. By your goodness, you have blessed us with this piano to enliven our hearts and adorn our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Grant that by your mercy, we may ever glorify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless this piano for use in the services of his house. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the innumerable blessings you have bestowed on us, especially for the revelation of your will and grace in Jesus Christ, your Son. Preserve for your church the pure doctrine of your saving word. Raise up pastors to preach repentance and the forgiveness of sins in Christ's name. And fill all your baptized children with your spirit and his fruits. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your mercy, remember the enemies of your church. Grant them repentance and amendment of life, that they would know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and be joined to the communion of, their, of your saints. Lord, in your mercy, to all those who have returned to school, give diligence in their studies, respect toward their teachers, and a desire to grow in knowledge. Keep students, teachers, and staff safe from every danger. Bless especially the schools, colleges, and seminary of our synod. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for our president, for our national and state governments, and for our judges. And we pray that they would defend and protect life from the womb to the grave. We give thanks also for all those whose duty it is to protect and serve in our communities. Watch over them as they carry out their duties and protect them and us from violence and every ill. Lord, in your mercy, we implore you to visit the sick, the suffering, the homebound, the grieving, and all who stand in need. Whatever their trials, have mercy on them and comfort them with the knowledge that nothing can separate them from the love you have for them in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you on behalf of Harold and Lila Jesuits in commemoration of their 72nd wedding anniversary. Be with them as you have in the past and give them grace to live out their days in your mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. Bless those who approach your holy altar this day, that they would receive in faith and with thanksgiving the very body and blood of Jesus for the forgiveness of their sins. Lord, in your mercy, although we are worthy of none of the things for which we pray, we ask that you would get, grant them all to us by grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who having created all things, took on human flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake, he died on the cross and rose from the dead to put an end to death, thus fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Almighty and most merciful Father, send down upon us the grace of your Holy Spirit, 
And through your holy word, be pleased to bless and sanctify these your gifts of bread and wine, that they may be the body and blood of your most dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, O Lord, according to his institution, we, your servants, celebrate here before your divine majesty. With these, your holy gifts, the commemoration your Son has willed us to make, remembering his blessed passion, mighty resurrection, and glorious ascension. We give you most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits he has secured for us, and we humbly ask you to grant that by his merits and death and through faith in his blood, we in your whole church may receive forgiveness of sins and all other benefits of his passion through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this Holy Supper. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen.